Hello, welcome back. My name is Michaela. I am a fifth grade teacher and here is part two of classroom setup for this year. I'm not like fully into classroom setup yet. I keep sneaking into school to see if they have put tables in my room yet and they hadn't. Uh, so I decided to come today to do some labeling on some books that I've been wanting to do. And I was surprised to see a couple tables in my room. I don't think this is gonna be all of them because I don't think that would be enough to hold all of my students. But I'm very excited that there are some tables in here. I'm assuming they're gonna make these a little bit higher eventually. This is pretty low for fifth graders. I am trying to decide how many kids should be at each table. Like is four enough or could I add two on the ends and make it six and then six and six. I don't know what a good number is for a group. It makes sense for classroom management sake to have it be a smaller number. Um, but when the tables are bigger, it makes sense for me to like put more kids at the table. And I also don't want like a million tables in here. So I'm just trying to find a good balance between classroom management and also using my space efficiently. Like I said, I did not come here today to do tables. It was just a nice extra little surprise. What I did come here to do is print out some book labels because right now my books do all have labels on them. They are all labeled with a letter that corresponds to the book's author's last name. And all my nonfiction books have a little symbol that tells you what the topic is. Right now, most of my books have the genre in the inside cover, but I actually want to put it on the outside so it's easier for kids to find books that they're actually gonna be interested in. So if they like fantasy, See, they can just look for the fantasy label on the outside of the book and that'll be a lot easier for them. So right now you can see the letter is just on the spine and so I'm just gonna put the genre label like right above it, like right there. I love the original resource that I have for this with just the letters on it. Um, so I got the genre labels from the same person on TPT, which I will link below. Here are all the genres I've printed out. So I have a lot of realistic fiction and a lot of fantasy in my library. So I printed out those the most, but I printed out a few other ones that I think I will come across more often. I'm only gonna be here for like half an hour. So I'm gonna label as many as I can and then I will come back a different day. Also, it is so hot here. Like I am just, I just stand here and I am like sweating everywhere, so that's fun. I'm not sure about the best way to go about doing this. Like, I don't know if I should just take out all of a letter or all of a shelf and then organize it by genre. I feel like that would be the easiest way to do this instead of like going through every single book one at a time, labeling it and putting it back on the shelf because who knows what kind of order they're in right now. Yeah, I talked it out. I think that might be my best course of action. So the graphic novel labels are actually a free resource that you can download if you like sign up for their newsletter or whatever. Um, so if you wanna try them out or just want some labels for graphic novels, you could do that. I was a little nervous about this taking up too much space on the spine, um, but I don't think it looks that bad. It doesn't take up too much. You'll probably still be able to usually see the title and the author depending on how the spine is designed. So I will teach the kids to look right above the letter for the genre. And then I think the letters will be just a good way to organize the shelves in general. And now for all the bad guys. I just realized that I had labeled every single one of these Last Kids on Earth books as fantasy and not graphic novel, and now I am wondering if they're actually considered a graphic novel or not. Um, they have like pictures and stuff, but they are not in the traditional graphic novel format. So let me know if you think I should relabel them as fantasy, but I think they kind of scratch that itch for graphic novels. Look at that, that looks so nice. There we go, all the graphic novels are done. I think it looks really, really good actually. And I'm excited to see it on the rest of the books because I wanna see what it looks like when the genres are kind of like scattered throughout. Uh, Cause obviously that's what it's gonna end up looking like once kids start putting books back. Like when I organize it, obviously I'm gonna put all the genres together, but we know that that's not reality when kids start doing stuff. All right, so I'm gonna get going. I will come back on here whenever I come back which is, who knows, it could be tomorrow, could be next week, could be next month. I'll see you then. Okay, I'm back, it's a couple days later. I saw that there was someone in the parking lot, so like I haven't filmed. I've been here for like a couple hours. Um, I have just been labeling books. I just decided to start um, with the first shelf and then just organize them on my desk uh, by genre and then just label them and I'll get through them all eventually. One thing that's been really helpful for finding the genre is looking up books on Goodreads because down at the bottom they have a bunch of different genres for the book. So that's been really helpful. And here's another little montage because I feel like that's just what you're supposed to put in a classroom set of video. So, sorry. I came here and there was a nice surprise for me. 
all the tables are here. Currently there are six tables. I think that I could fit like four students at four of them and then maybe six at two of these like super long ones here. The super long ones are a little bit awkward and I don't really like them, but I don't know how many kids I'm gonna have. So I'm gonna keep it. And then if I end up having less, then I might just get rid of it before school starts. I also saw this like round table up in our storage area and I kind of want to ask if I can switch out one of those long tables with the round one, but I don't know if that's like being used for something. The other thing is my custodian Dan was like, please let me know if you want to move the tables and he'll help me so we don't scratch the wax on the floor. I totally understand why he doesn't want me to move things myself. But at the same time, like I'm super indecisive and I need to see things like I can't visualize without actually seeing it. And I don't want to make him come in here and like move it around like a million times just because I'm being indecisive and I need to see every option. But I feel bad and I feel like I'm going to get in trouble if I try to do it myself. So what I did instead to try to help with this issue is I measured out uh, the room based on how many squares there are on the floor and I made this little model and then I measured all the tables based on how many squares they would take up and then I made this more precise model where I cut out all the little tables I cut out my classroom and then I was like trying to fit them all and I can't like it's impossible to do in this little thing. So I think it's a good like estimate, but I don't think it fully solves my problem. So I'm gonna pick the arrangement that seemed to work out the best on that piece of paper and then see what it looks like. And if I hate it, then I'm just gonna have to suck it up and ask him to move the tables again. Okay, I gotta go. So I don't even have time to tell you anything I did, but I will see you the next time I'm here. Bye. Hello, uh, I'm back. It's like a week later. I came in once to label some books and that's all I've done. I was hoping that I would come in and my tables would have been moved but they are not. So I'm gonna admit here that I'm gonna try to move them with some help so I'm not gonna be dragging them across the floor. I promise. And then we'll see if my custodian gets mad at me. This is the first time I'm able to be here for like a significant amount of time. I don't have anything to do tonight. And so I have quite a few things that I wanna try to get done. If I can get all my books labeled, that would be awesome. I also want to update this class jobs bulletin board. I updated my entire class jobs list and uh, this actually was never used last year. Um, I had started to put things up and then we changed some of the jobs halfway through the year and some of them weren't printed and I just like never put them up. So this isn't even something that I used. So I'm gonna take all this down and then add the new jobs that I created for this next year. And then I'll maybe actually use this this year. That's the hope. I also think I might do a book flicks thing here. Um, so I'm gonna try to get that done today as well. I was gonna try to do like a words we love board, but I have a friend who is a first year teacher this year and I'm helping her with some of her classroom setup and she's gonna do a book flicks. And then I got my mind set on it. And so now I kind of want to do it too. And then after that, who knows? If I have time and I get all of that done, I will find something else to do. All right, if you have watched my classroom haul video, you will see that I got this whiteboard from this company online who just wanted to give it to me, which is amazing. And thank you so much, Max Tech. But I am going to put that together right now. Uh, I've already started to pull apart the boxes and there's a lot of tape and we'll see how it goes if I can do this on my own. I bet I can. I can do anything I set my mind to. Um, but yeah, I can do that now. Dr. Pepper, if you want to sponsor me, you'll be featured in every single one of my videos. Let me get out my handy dandy uh, toolkit and get a hammer. Feels like I'm breaking it. I am breaking it. Okay. <laughs> oh, there it goes. Okay, I got it. Round two. It's literally peeling off like a little crayon. Wheels. Another flip. I literally have no idea how this is supposed to work. I feel like this is a really inefficient way to do this. Someone could definitely have come up with a better way to screw this on, but I'm not an engineer, so don't ask me. Ah, it's tightening. One down, three to go. There we go, number two. Practice makes perfect. Those last three took less time than the first one altogether. I don't think I'm gonna get half the stuff done that I said I was gonna get done today. I think I might set this up and then maybe label some books. I'm kind of over labeling books. Um, I might work on a bulletin board or something or just like print a bunch of stuff is possible. I think I'm gonna come back tomorrow um, and work on a bunch of stuff during the day. It just feels nice to be back in the classroom. The only thing that is not nice is how hot it is. I think I might bring a fan or something. Okay, all right, the base is done. 
So I just realized this says two people required and I did this all by myself. I finished it. So this is actually really nice. Um, there's like two pieces and it also has a back to it, which I just realized is awesome because then I can have like two groups of kids working at the same whiteboard, just one in the front, one in the back, which is amazing. And now for the fun part, I get to peel off this plastic coating uh, and we'll see if it is very satisfying on this video or if it falls flat. Oh, that's so nice. I should start an ASMR channel. Oh no, there's like a tiny piece. I don't know if I'll be able to get it off. Yeah, I really love this. I think it's gonna work super well in my classroom. I'm super lucky that Max Tech reached out to me for this. So for now, I'm just gonna put it over here and then I'll figure out where it's going in a different day when all these chairs are in a different spot. Why I have never thought to move the garbage to me during classroom setup is beyond me. I don't know why I've never thought of that until now, but I bet it's gonna be a game changer. Okay, here's what I'm thinking right now. I moved the little table I had right here to the other side. I had it here last year and it just like blocked the whiteboard, like half the whiteboard, and it blocked like being able to move things on the schedule really easily. So I moved it to this side because I do need a table up there to hold like the document camera and the mouse and the keyboard and stuff like that. What used to be on this side is this little cube shelf and I had all of these caddies in there um, with like some basic supplies that they could use if they needed it. But this year, since I am using tables, the caddies will be at their tables. I'm trying to figure out what to do with this cube shelf and what I can put on it if I'm not gonna put caddies on it. So the options I have right now are I could put it underneath the BenQ board like sideways. I could put it underneath the class job station. I could also put it like in this area right here. But again, my issue is I don't know what to put on it now. One thing I was thinking is that there will still need to be stations in the room to get extra supplies. Like if they run out of certain supplies at their table, the supply captain job will go refill their caddy. And so I was like, maybe I could just put all of the extra supplies on this shelf. I could also use it to hold like clipboards and whiteboards and stuff like that. That's actually a really good idea. I might do that because there are still some community supplies that aren't gonna be at their table. Um, so I guess I can use this to hold those things. Well, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna talk this out for a second. I have six tables currently. I don't know if I'm keeping all the tables, but there are six slots in this cube shelf. So there could be like a slot for each table and then each slot could be the spot for that table, like for them to store those things. Maybe, I don't know, I might just make it more community and then each slot is for a different thing. I don't know, because I guess I am getting those drawers that are gonna go with each table too, so those could hold. I don't know, I'll figure it out. I've also been just like kind of taking things out of storage, like decoration things that kind of make my room feel like my room and it's so nice. I started putting up my plants again and the bins for my series and it's just making me feel so nice inside and I actually really, really like it with tables instead of desks. So the vibe is common together. I was watching my classroom setup video from last year though when I learned that I couldn't have any lights or additional things that plug in and I'm still really sad about that like I don't know if there's any other way to make this room cozier without those things um but yeah so that made me a little sad all right I gotta go um I'm gonna show you what I did I did something very minimal I moved this over here for now I don't think I love it unless something goes on top of here that's like bigger if that makes sense because I feel like there's like a weird amount of space between the bulletin board and the shelf right now but then when I put it up a little long way it just felt like there's a lot of space on the sides so I don't know what's up with that right now but it looks kind of weird I kind of started putting this together I don't know if it's gonna be weird having the chair that close to the door but I do like that the outlets are right there I usually use my Chromebook right there and so it'll be nice to plug it in I will try to set this up a different day I also completely cleared off that back bulletin board so I can put 
book books there the next time I come. I am gonna be back later this week, but I'm gonna end this video now. So if you wanna see what happens to my classroom, please subscribe. I appreciate you being here and following along with whatever's going on with me in my teaching journey. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.